actually really fell into filmmaking by accident. I started out wanting to be a writer and a journalist and uh, then um, worked in television and learned to edit film and discovered that uh, this was a medium I really wanted to work in. I had always been in love with, uh, with fiction film and uh, making documentaries somehow became a beautiful merging of the visual uh, storytelling and the word and for me that's uh, really a perfect combination. Girl Inside is the story of a young uh, transgender person who is transitioning to become fully her female self. We followed Madison over the course of three years as she transitions mainly with the help of her 80 year old grandmother Vivian who uh, has very different ideas about femininity coming from a completely different generation. So there's this uh, really interesting juxtaposition between the uh, generations. And through the course of the film, we meet her family who are going through their own transformation as any family does when someone is under undergoing a profound change. And uh, Madison's 80 year old grandmother is helping her with her transition, but she has very different ideas about femininity than someone who is uh, 26 years old. So there is this uh, interesting juxtaposition of uh, generational ideas about what it means to be a woman. I really wanted to make a statement I really wanted to explore the idea of what it means to be a woman and femininity and uh, also explore the idea that there are so many different expressions of that, especially today. And what I realized over the course of the film as well is that this really is a film about love and about how when one person is undergoing a profound change in a family or in a group, then the other people who are part of that circle around that person also are going through a profound transformation. So it's really a film about um, gender identity, love, personal transformation. I do sometimes look to other films uh, as a source of inspiration when I'm making a documentary, not always. In the case of Girl Inside, uh, there hadn't been a lot of films made on the topic of um, someone transitioning but I had seen a very powerful film called Southern Comfort, uh, much different in style than what I was doing, uh, but I think what really inspired me with Southern Comfort was the authenticity and integrity of the storytelling. The, the filmmaker didn't get in the way of the storytelling, she really let the subjects uh, be who they were, express themselves, and be themselves and also actually it was a film as well about love so I, I would say that really Southern Comfort there's the spirit of the film Southern Comfort somehow um, did uh, did inspire me as I was going through the making of uh, Girl Inside. I don't think I chose documentary I think documentary chose me actually and it's something that uh, took me a long time to realize that in my heart I was a writer in my heart, I was going to make uh, narrative, dramatic feature films because that's uh, the kind of film that I always like to go and see in a theater. And um, I've thought about it a lot and realized that actually uh, documentary filmmaking is really the perfect form for me to, to bring together the visual and the story. I, I, I also do love narrative filmmaking. I think there are so many possibilities with film, but for sure, Film is the way for me to express myself. My parents were artists, painters, and uh, a visual aesthetic is very important to me, but never more important than the integrity and heart of a story. Yeah. The intersection between art and politics. Well, art is inherently political, although it sometimes can exist uh, in a vacuum or appear to exist in a vacuum. In the case of documentary, um, many documentaries are overtly political and some are, are more subtle in their message. In terms of um, what I'm trying to do as a filmmaker and what uh, my partner and collaborator Justine Pimlot and I are trying to do with our company Red Queen Productions is we really want to tell stories 
uh, that uh, shine a light on people on the margins, frequently uh, women. And one of the reasons that uh, Justine and I focus on uh, stories about women or what it means to be a woman in the world, however you define that, is because there aren't that many strong, powerful images of women on the screen. I don't see that many positive uh, role models on the screen. And I think you know the only way for society to change, one of the ways for society to change is for people to uh, be inspired and motivated by what they see in, in popular culture and on the screen. So I, I actually feel a real sense of urgency I have a, a strong mission, we have a strong mission at Red Queen to get this message out. Um, as documentary filmmakers, uh, me and my collaborator Justine Pimlot are really interested in shining a light on um, stories about uh, strong, powerful stories about women, about uh, people outside the mainstream, about people who identify as queer or more importantly identify as outside the heteronormative model that uh, we so frequently see. In, in films, often it's uh, it's just inherent. I think many filmmakers don't even realize um, that uh, they're making they're coming from that place of assumption. So we're trying to kind of correct what um, what we see as an imbalance. We're also interested in um, other communities that are on the margins and really just giving voice to people who otherwise uh, may not have a, mo a voice. Uh, my collaborator and partner Justine Pimlot and I have a film at. Uh, uh, that we just launched. And um, so our, our most recent film we collaborated as co-directors is called Derby Crazy Love. It's about uh, women's roller derby and uh, the, the subculture of roller derby, which is a very feminist uh, DIY uh, culture. It was actually a really um, fun film to make, but also it's a really inspiring film, I think, uh, for a new generation of people to uh, see a different kind of femininity that is being uh, celebrated in that community. And we are developing a feature documentary called The Fruit Machine, uh, which is about um, the uh, history of uh, uh, the gay and lesbian history in Canada and to a degree North America, focusing on a radical uh, newspaper called The Body Politic, uh, which is um, no longer here, it was a precursor to Extra, but The Body Politic was this formative um, gay liberation newspaper that really was at the forefront of all of the movements of what was happening in um, gay liberation in North America. And then we're developing some other films that, um, that uh, we're developing some other films that we don't know where they're going yet. There isn't a lot of support for documentary filmmaking in this country, which is really, uh, I think, a, a disaster because we, our country invented the documentary form. We brought documentary to the world. And it, I truly believe that documentary is one of our um, cultural, I don't know if institutions is the right word, but it's something that we really need to celebrate and more importantly, we need to protect. And I don't see that happening. I believe that we need to have subsidies in Canadian cinemas, quotas rather. I believe that we need to have quotas in Canadian cinemas so that there is a quota system of the number of Canadian films that need to be shown in the theatres because we are being engulfed by the American market, as is the rest of the world, but since we're the neighbours it really affects us so much of, of uh, what is happening in our industry, not only in um, documentary, in our narrative filmmaking, on television, we're just being swamped by one view of what um, is considered um, interesting to an audience. And it's such a limited view. I actually believe that audiences are much more intelligent than marketers and distributors and programmers and broadcasters uh, give credit to. I mean, pro actually, I shouldn't include programmers in that because film festivals are the lifeblood of documentary filmmakers, it's an opportunity for us to directly engage with our audience. And, and for many filmmakers, it's the only opportunity because it's, there's, there are so many limited resources to get our films out there in the theaters. I think what Cinema Politica is doing is amazing and it's so inspiring. And I, I'm, 
we need to get our films out there and, and to get them out into the schools and into the universities because the reality is that uh, students are the future. They're the future of filmmaking, they're the future of our culture, they're the future of our country.